Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush back at it with another video. You might have noticed that in recent videos, I've been talking a lot about crossplay and why we need it on PC, especially for a select number of games, fighting games in particular, where they don't have a lot of longevity on PC. Well, a couple of developers and publishers have wanted their games to have crossplay, and it really came down to Sony. And Sony pretty much just said it's not gonna happen. In the case of Wargroove, the developer made several requests for crossplay on PlayStation 4 and PC. Sony put the kibosh on that, and then you also have an instance of the Realm Royale developers. hi res wants all of their games to be crossplay as well, but it seems like Sony isn't letting down their walls on crossplay, and that's so unfortunate because for the developers, they want crossplay in all of their games. From what I hear, it's really easy for developers to implement crossplay into their games. It's not like it's this massive undertaking for a lot of developers it's just toggling an on off switch so really unfortunate i do want to take a look at that also the crackdown 3 reviews are coming in and i think a lot of us expected this going into it it's not getting very good reviews i mean it's got a 62 on metacritic right now it's not like it's absolutely bombing and considering that it is a part of game pass and you can get a game pass subscription for like a dollar for your first month Hey, I'm subscribed to Game Pass. I'm still probably going to check out this game. But as far as all of the games coming early 2019, is Crackdown 3 going to be one of the more notable ones? Probably not. And also, lastly, a hidden PlayStation exclusive has just dropped on PC. It has been released on Steam coming at a great price. And I do want to give that a mention as well. It's a game from that game company. It's a very relaxing and casual game, but definitely one to at the very least add to your wish list. More on that at the end of this video. First up, let's talk about Sony being a little whack and blocking crossplay. This directly comes from the Wargroove developers. He made a post over on Restera. And he said, we made many requests for crossplay, both through our account manager and directly with the higher-ups all the way up until release month. We were told in no uncertain terms that it was not going to happen. From our side, we literally toggle a switch and have it working. Of course, policy work might be more complicated for Sony. Just wanted to provide some balance on the issue and say that it certainly isn't a question of developers having not contacted their account managers or having dropped the ball. So that just seems like Sony putting their foot down and saying crossplay is not going to happen with Wargroove. And that's so unfortunate because they've allowed crossplay in games like Fortnite and Rocket League, and yes, those games are more popular, but in the case of those games, they're gonna sell anyway. People are gonna play those games anyway. In the case of Wargroove, where someone might be a little bit hesitant and adding in an element like crossplay, that might actually push them over the edge to buy a game like this, a smaller title that's probably not gonna sell as well as Rocket League. I mean, I think that goes without saying. And for games like this to lose out on crossplay, that absolutely sucks. Hopefully at some point we can get this all changed. They weren't even given reasons as to why crossplay wasn't allowed in this game. Maybe it's because if they open the floodgates for Wargroove to have crossplay, you pretty much have to allow every other game to have crossplay. And maybe they're not ready to jump that barrier yet. My question is, why aren't you ready to open the floodgates to allow every game to have crossplay? It's not a big deal anymore. A lot of games are going this route. Xbox and Switch are having crossplay. It looks like the developers are completely on board. The only real side that isn't on board right now is Sony and they're even on board with games like Rocket League and games like Fortnite but in those cases those games have a little bit more leverage than a game like Wargroove and why I want crossplay so badly is we're just coming up on the release of Jump Force. Jump Force is a game that I'm very excited for but guess what I fully expect that game to not have all too much longevity on PC. I don't foresee a lot of people playing it on PC and I do see it going by the wayside in terms of an online community rather quickly. That's just the case with all fighting games. You can even look at a game like Soul Calibur 6. That game isn't all too active either. And to allow crossplay on PC for fighting games in particular, that would be so awesome because it would add longevity. It would actually also make people want to buy these games on PC and that would mean more money for the developers. There's just so much good to be had with crossplay. But at this point, Sony is putting the kibosh on that. And it's not just the Wargroove developers. The Realm Royale guys, High Rises had also put out this tweet. Quote, hey, Sony and PlayStation, it's time to stop playing favorites and tear down the crossplay progression wall for everyone. We have Smite, Paladins, and Realm Royale ready to go when you are. Again, those are some more games that don't have crossplay at this point. Will they get crossplay? I hope at some point they do, but it always comes back to Sony. Sony doing this, Sony not allowing that. It's because they're so far ahead in the race. And I do have to say, Sony's been pretty pro consumer this generation, so it's not like they've been doing anti consumer practice after anti consumer practice. It's really just this one instance of crossplay, and people will point to, oh, my. Microsoft held back last generation, so it's right for Sony to do it this generation. How does two wrongs make a right? Have you guys ever heard that saying? You're just advocating for more anti-consumer practices. That's so crazy to me that people that are playing games on PlayStation are like, you want to play with PlayStation gamers? Just buy a PlayStation. Do you realize that buying a PlayStation means you have to buy another console? You have to subscribe to PlayStation Plus? You have to jump through all of these hoops? 
It's just insanity to me that there is this contingency of gamers that is okay with Sony foregoing on crossplay and not allowing for it. It's completely anti-consumer. Everybody else is on board. It's just Sony that isn't, and it would help out the developers a lot. It would help out the gamers a lot. The only one I guess it might not help out is Sony themselves, but really, what is Sony going to be losing out on? It's not like people are going to stop buying PlayStation consoles. People are still going to buy PlayStation consoles for the incredible first-party games. So yeah, that's my spiel on that. Hopefully, at some point, with every game across the board, we can get crossplay. Whether it be a fighting game, whether it be an indie game, whether it be a big budget game and a more popular game like a Rocket League or a Fortnite, every game should be breaking down those walls and having crossplay. Moving on from that, I also want to talk a little bit about the Crackdown 3 reviews. This game has been in development hell for so long. This was one of the first Xbox One titles that was ever announced. And of course, with every Xbox One exclusive, it's going to be released on the Windows Store as well. So it's not like it's going to be a gigantic investment for this game because all of these games are also going to be included in Game Pass. Game Pass is a bunch of other great games like Forza Horizon 4, Gears of War 4, and it's getting more and more games. And if you do have an Xbox One, well, your Game Pass subscription carries over, so there's a lot of value in that. So it's not like anybody should be paying a full $60 for Crackdown 3. However, just because there isn't a gigantic barrier for entry for Crackdown 3, I was still hoping to get a relatively good game. Medic Critic right now has this game scored at a 62, and you'll see scores all over the place. Some reviews are very positive about it, giving it an 8.5 out of 10, and then you have some reviews going as low as a 4 out of 10. The majority of them do seem to be around that 6 to 7 range. IGN said Crackdown 3's mediocre campaign fills a big open world with paint-by-numbers gameplay that barely evolves after the opening hours. Metro Game Central gave the game a 4 out of 10, saying a tragic end to Crackdown 3's long and painful journey with an unremarkable campaign mode and multiplayer that is a disaster in terms of tech and design. PC Games and gave the game a 6 out of 10, saying competent with enough fun weapons and silly spectacle to make it inoffensive entertainment. While a half decade of development hell could have ended with worse results, it's tough to muster much excitement for what's here. I do want to read off one of the more positive reviews for the game. John Powell of Culture of Gaming gave the game an 8.5 out of 10. Despite the setbacks and delays, Crackdown 3 has put the franchise firmly back on solid ground, and that is mostly because of the exceptional work and dedication of developer Sumo Digital. They have not only addressed all of the shortcomings of Crackdown 2, but they have improved upon the core gameplay and experience itself. Crackdown's future is so bright, the cigar-chomping, slave-driving, blowhard sourpuss of an agency director would be crackling a smile if he could. Good things come to those who wait, and Crackdown fans have certainly had to do that. So there is some positivity with Crackdown 3. It's not like the game has been entirely a disaster. Even a 62 meta score, that usually points to there being some sort of quality in the game. But with a lot of games these days, 80s and 90s are just thrown around so easily. In the past, a 62 would have just been seen as, okay, the game's not great, but that's about an average game. Now, a 62 is seen as, you know, one of the worst games of the year. It's literally gone to that point. So unfortunate for Crackdown 3. But again, the cost of entry is isn't too high for the game, so at least you have that going for it. And lastly, I do want to note that that game company's flower has been quietly released on PC. I'm surprised that this game is getting a Steam release as well, because we know that Journey looks to be a Epic Game Store exclusive, but Flower was that game company's first title, and it was a great game on the PlayStation 3. It was really the first one that set that game company in motion, and it's a very simple game, but it's very relaxing at the same time. It's an interactive escape that takes you on an emotional journey like no other game you've experienced. Key features include simple gameplay controls and I do have to say recalling from when I played this game on the PS3 this game is super simplistic but at the same time the presentation is on point that it's very easy to stay absorbed into the game lush and interactive environments and it's immersive and emotional while you don't have that story directly told to you you'll notice by the end of the game okay it's a little bit moving of a game and what's it priced at well it's only six dollars and 99 cents so that's great I believe that's what it goes for on the PlayStation 4 now it was ported to the PS4 as well so great to see flower be released on PC a game that's definitely going to be forgotten about in the coming weeks because because it's gotten like no promotion whatsoever, but add it to your wish list. Down the line, it could be 75% off, and that will put it in the less than $2 range. Maybe it'll be a part of a humble bundle in the future. If you want to, $6.99 for the game is absolutely worth it. Flower is a tremendous game, and it's a tremendous experience. However, I do foresee it going on sale relatively quickly, and I'll let you guys know when I do see a good deal on that, but add it to your wish list for now. And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, if you've been hoping for more and more games to get cross-play on PC, really seems to be an issue on Sony's hand right now. Sony seems to be the the ones that are blocking it and that absolutely sucks. That goes for Wargroove and high res titles. I think high res titles have a far better chance than Wargroove to get crossplay sometime in the future, but even they are having trouble right now. Crackdown 3 reviews are coming out and they're not looking all too great. 62 on Metacritic right now. I think most of us were expecting a rather lackluster game given the development time. Still gonna be one that I'm gonna check out just because it's a part of Game Pass. And lastly, Flower has been released on PC. Add that game to your wish list at the very least. 
just it's a very artistic game very moving game very emotional game a casual relaxing game but one that's definitely worth your time and money and that's gonna conclude this video let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below if you have a request for a future video you can leave that in the comments as well and i will catch you guys in the next one peace out Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate it if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.